Hey Luke here with CaptainCarp.com and I'm going to show you how to make a pocket knife. Now this is a Higonokami Japanese style pocket knife. It's a very utilitarian pocket knife. It's a very simple pocket knife to make. I'm very much a beginner, a hobbyist, and I can do this, you can too. And if you're good at blacksmithing, if you're good at knife making, you're going to be able to take this design and really do something awesome with it. So this is a great project whether you're a beginner or an expert. The Higo no Kami knife is a very simple traditional Japanese pocket knife. It's got a folded metal handle and a thumb tab on the blade which allows you to open it. There's no locking mechanism except for the thumb tab being pressed against the handle which you can pin to the handle when you hold it. I built this forge myself and I did a video on how to build a forge like this and it works great. I'll put a link in the description so you can figure out how to build this yourself if you're interested. The metal I'm using for the blade is half inch rebar. I would have preferred quarter inch rebar but eh, you, you work with what you got. So I heat the tip up as best I can and start flattening it out. You beat it starting at the tip down to where about the, uh, the end of the blade is and then flip it over and do the same and keep repeating this flipping it over and keep doing this until you get the metal as thick as you want the blade. The metal will get a little bit of a bend to it and if it gets uh, too extreme, just give it some light taps on the uh, edge to straighten it out. Try to be really accurate and consistent in your hammer blows, working from the tip down to the bottom of the blade, then flipping it over and repeating. Make sure that you heat the steel in the right place, that the part that you're going to be beating on is the part that gets the hottest. Once you got the rough profile that you want, then you start working on the bevel of the edge. Beat just the edge of the bevel, with the hammer half on, half off of the iron and, and work your way down the blade, stretching out the metal. Now, because this is half inch steel, this is a little bit more material than I really need. So what I'm gonna be doing is stretching out the blade a lot thicker than I really need it. Then I'm gonna trim my point with a chisel and then I'm gonna use an angle grinder to cut off the excess material to make it the, the width I want. This is where having quarter inch rebar would, would have been nicer. I wouldn't have had to do this with quarter inch rebar. Trying to keep the edge and the spine really straight is always a, a chore. So gently beating both the, the cutting edge and the spine against the flat part of the anvil helps uh, keep that nice and flat. Then I've got to start drawing out uh, the thumb tab. And so what I'm doing is I'm trying to make about a quarter inch square piece of material where the thumb tab would be. And this requires a lot of pounding. And what you're doing is you're pounding it then flipping it 90 degrees and pounding it and flipping 90, 90 degrees and really stretching this steel out to make a thin piece. And you can see here there's just a lot of beating. But then use the edge of the anvil to try to get a nice clean edge between the th where the thumb tab is and the blade. And once you've drawn the metal out, you want to bend it 90 degrees. And then you're going to bend it back another 90 degrees. You bend it twice so that the thumb tab is slightly offset. You want the bottom of the thumb tab to be about level with the top of the spine of the blade. And that's why you bend it twice. Now I made a big mistake here. I did this while the steel was relatively cold and I tore the steel a little bit. Working the metal back and forth while it was cold put this tear in it and I just couldn't fix it and I ended up tearing off my thumb tab. Uh, uh. So to kind of undo the damage I put the metal on the edge of the anvil and really tried to beat some definition to this little thumb tab that I had left and then pounded a little bit thinner than I normally would have. And that seemed to work okay and, and kind of repair the damage. Once I had the shape I wanted I pulled out the angle grinder and started cleaning it up. I would go down the edges and make them straighter and smoother and then work out some of the blacksmithing marks and the vice grip really helps with this. Um, then for the sides, where you really want to do a lot of uh, smoothing out, I put it down on a magnet. I had a 250-pound magnet and just put the blade down on the magnet so it wouldn't move around and that allowed me to, to grind on it on the flat side and that, that really helped. And that turned out pretty good. You can see here, not too shabby. 
not not the best thing you've ever seen, but relatively straight and and the good shape I wanted. So then I took a piece of 16 gauge steel and I cut out a rectangle that was twice the width of the handle, more or less, with a little about a one sixteenth to spare. And I put one side of the handle in the vise and bend it over and then flip it over and use the vise to, to slowly pinch the handle uh, shut, you know, to, so there, there's a nice little gap in there and then I cut it free. And that's how you bent, bend the handle. And then you put the blade in there and test it and make sure it's not completely shut so you still have room to open and close the blade. Then I go and I figure out where I want to put the pin and I drilled a quarter inch hole. Then I lay the knife on top of the handle and use a sharpie to mark where I want to drill the hole in the handle. And I go through both sides. Then I cut off a quarter inch piece of rod to use as the pin and I want it just a little bit wider than what I need. And uh, kind of test things out, make sure everything's working smooth, that the knife uh, comes out of the handle well. And you can see here I need to cut off a little material out of the back of the handle so that the knife can open up all the way. And you want it to be all the metal that's just above where the thumb tab would rest. So all we have left to do is we have to temper the blade and then we want to uh, shape and polish everything. All right, let's do it. When you temper the blade, you want to get it to the right temperature and a magnet will help you know when you're there. Take the blade, you take it off the handle, put it in and some coals here and get that thing blazing hot. I want it straw yellow. And you can see here when it's all perfect, it's no longer magnetic. You know you got it up to temper, it's no longer magnetic, and then I quench it in water. This is a, not a very high quality steel, so a water quench works better than a, a oil quench, I think. Um, and you just look at it, make sure there's no cracks or anything. It looks good, it has it warped, and this will harden it up a little bit, make it a little bit tougher. Now I put that pin in and I cut off the extra. I want just about a, a less than a sixteenth of metal on either side and I put it down on an anvil and I beat the pin and you want to be careful not to miss the pin and squish the handle and that'll keep the pin from coming out. You've mushroomed the pin a little bit on both sides. It'll be stiff at first and you kind of open and close it and it'll, it'll loosen up and then I go in and ground the edges off the handle and put a little like finger notch in there and uh, maybe round off the edges, get rid of all the burrs. Um, and it's just kind of do whatever you want with this. this is an opportunity to make the handle kind of look however you want it to. There's a lot of artistic freedom with this. But once you've rounded all the corners and knocked off all the burrs, I switch over to my waterproof sandpaper. And I like to do this in front of the TV. I start with like a 220 grit sandpaper and just rub everything and it takes hours this is the most time intensive part just uh polish and polish and polish and you go from a 220 to a 320 to a 400 all the way up to a 600 grit sandpaper and you can spend a lot of time and make this look professionally machined or you can have a little bit of a more of a rougher polish like i like and then i pull out a file and i work on the actual cutting edge um, when you temper it the blades about a dime thickness then you're taking it down to the cutting edge and and uh, just using that file like a honing stone well there you go there's the finished product got my pocket knife got an edge on it it'll cut folds up really nice tensions just right it's not perfect and I think if I were to do this over again I could do a better job maybe make it a little bit thinner uh, maybe use a quarter inch rebar instead of half inch rebar uh, but man, I really like this. This is gonna be a fun knife. This is something I'll actually carry with me and, and use. Hey, thanks for watching and hopefully you learned something new and enjoyed yourself. If you'd like to see more videos from Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, check out these videos. Here's some other videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, including how to catch catfish from the bank and how to build a catch alive squirrel trap. I'll put links to these videos in the video description. And if you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every week. Thanks for watching.